Hey bitches, it's Bunny, and welcome to my channel. I'll say welcome back, but I was like, you know what? No, not gonna get fined by Jeffree Star. Not gonna do that. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hello, what's up? How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing good, so I hope you are too. I thought today, you know, I got out of college and I was like, you know what? I'm having a pretty chill day. Let's just sit down. Got my pumpkin over here. I got my tea. We can act like it's like coffee or something. And we could have like a little chill story time. This is probably something I get the most questions about. I just think it's one of the most controversial things I've ever included myself in. Sorry, my thing's going off. Today I'm just gonna sit down, we're gonna have a chill little story time, and we're gonna talk about my experience working at Petland. Now, for all of y'all that don't know, that don't live in the North, which I'm not actually, to be honest, sure everywhere Petland is. I know that there's some in Ohio and shit, but isn't Ohio the North too? I don't know. If y'all don't know what Petland is, it pretty much is a pet store, and they sell live animals, dead animals, and dogs, and some also do sell cats. I think one of the reasons Petland is so controversial in the first place is just because they do have live dogs. See, like opposed to PetSmart or Petco, where they don't have live dogs, they just have like small animals is what we call them. It's a lot more controversial just because we do have actual dogs in little, little cages. I mean, you could look at Petland dogs and you could see what it looks like yourself. They're in pretty small cages. Before I even get into this, I definitely wouldn't cut PetSmart or Petco off at all either and just chuck them up as God's gift to freaking animal rights earth because I've had plenty of friends that have worked at both PetSmart and Petco and they both have had a lot to say about that as well. So take that as you will, do your research. I'm not here to talk about something I didn't work at, so I'm not gonna even bring up PetSmart or Petco. This is just my personal experience working at Thailand. That's it, that's all I know, that's what it is. But before I even get into this, I do just wanna put out a couple different disclaimers. And the first of which being the video is not meant to judge anyone that works at Petland or used to work at Petland or even likes Petland. This video is just meant to tell my personal experience and to inform and educate others not to hate on anyone that might still like Petland Artworks there, like you do you, I would never hate on someone that's getting their money. Just like to say that. And another thing I do just wanna disclaim is, is that I don't have any bad blood towards the manager at all. She was cool as fuck and I really did like her. I honestly wish her the best and we're still friends on social media. So if you see this, what should I call you? Nikki, if you see this Nikki, hi bitch, what's up? Sorry, not sorry, I had to you know expose your store, but no bad blood over here all respect all love if you guys would like to keep on watching then stay tuned and we'll jump right into it so first i'll just start off with like how i got hired so the petland in my town was family owned underneath the family owned petland there was a lot of rumors you know people saying that it was inhumane that they abused their dogs they had the dogs from puppy mills stuff that i wasn't really like i was not interested in i'm an animal lover obviously i have zeus chilling on my shoulder i didn't really ever fuck with petland like at all like i just i had there was too many rumors about it didn't go it closed down for a while however the previous manager had died my friend started working there she had got hired as like a pet tech or something like that i had been talking about it and she was like yeah you should come work with me like it's really chill you get to work with dogs and i was like dude that sounds like so much fucking fun i just can't get over to the fact that they abuse animals i just can't get over that like, i'm sorry i was one of those people literally one of those people and she's like oh my god no it's corporate owned now it's nothing like that i'll get you in to meet the manager so she can hire you and you can talk to her about it and i was like um okay like i guess plus it was like dogs so i was like i mean i'll see i'll ask myself and see how it goes i went to the interview with nikki that is the manager there she was really super chill really cool made me feel at home all that kind of stuff she assured me that they took care of their animals I love their animals yada 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 i believed it i i love dogs i love all animals regardless so of course when she was like so do you want the job i'm like hell yeah like as long as y'all aren't abusing animals then i want the damn job fast forward into the first week working there we had all got together every day for two weeks for 10 hours a day now what we were told is that we were going to be training on how to take care of the animals the small animals the reptiles if you were in fish and the puppies of course if you were like a pet counselor and then the pet techs the, the veterinarians that work in the back did their own thing 
And so we had to be there literally 10 hours a day. It was miserable. And to be like completely blatantly honest with you, we didn't really do a lot about animal planning. However, when we did start doing some of the animal interactive learning and selling and all that kind of stuff and going up in front of the crowd of other employees. When we got into the puppy section, you know, the corporate guy that was opening the store came up there and he began talking to us about how we should look after the puppies and what we should expect going into working at Petland if we weren't a former employee from there because there were some employees still there from the previous owners that had just carried on into corporate. He pretty much told us that we were going to get a lot of backlash working at Petland. He said just to take it with a grain of salt, he said that um, while it does look inhumane, you cannot compare animals to humans and say that they're inhumane because they're not humans and inhumane means that it's inhuman and you can't say that to something that's not human. And that's kind of where I was like, <laughs> like I don't know. It just left me with like a sour taste in my mouth. That was the training week. The very beginning, October 2017, we go into the first week. My very first warning sign that made it seem like maybe this wasn't a job for me was the fact that the employees were super competitive with each other. And I don't mean like a normal like amount of competitiveness. They were cutthroat with each other. They would steal the sales. They would go out of their way to make you feel like you didn't know what you're doing they would lie and it was all about selling it was like instead of getting like hey don't do that it was more of like if you did do that you got congratulated for it it wasn't like a fun kind of competitiveness it became very aggressive we're selling animals should not be like that at all it gave people the mentality like oh i had to be better than you i had to be better than you got to be better than you that's not a good mentality to ever put yourself in to feel like you have to be better than somebody else and I feel like that's where a lot of like the downfall came in for the employees that were working there. I also feel like that competitiveness and that aggressiveness also made employees feel like they could talk to each other however they want to talk to each other. Where are you going? What does start off with a boy named Red? Now Red was an actual piece of shit to me like I'm sorry but there's I, I'm not sorry it's just a dick he would literally boss me around mind you he was not a manager he was literally an employee we were the same. It'd be the end of the night. He'd be like, why aren't you mopping? Bitch, why aren't you mopping? Aren't you an employee too? Don't we do the same job? He'd be like, oh, oh buddy, that needs to be cleaned up. You can't clean it, but I would, okay. I'd be doing the closing work. Oh, make sure you're closing the store down. Why do you feel like the need to tell me to do stuff I'm already doing? Why? Red has literally yelled at me in my face. I did nothing because I didn't want to lose my job. I went to the manager and Nikki pretty much told me. I'll talk to him. Don't worry about it. Like, we're not, I'm not going to let that happen. Like, we're all a team here. This should be a team. Whatever. I don't work there now, so you can see how that worked out. It was around November and Nikki had asked me and Red to stay a little bit longer to help her set up for, like, the Christmas decorations because us and other corporate stores were in a contest on who could decorate the best and i was like you know sure i just started in october and this was in november i wasn't be like no fuck you bitch and we stayed till like 11 o'clock putting it together we didn't win by the way so a waste of time i had to go and get tape or something it was like above me and i'm sure i'm only 5 3 so i had to like get on my tippy toes to reach up to get into the cabinet where the tape was at and red comes behind me and he literally puts his dick on my ass Kid you not, I keep my mouth shut, go to the manager, and she just laughs. It gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. I don't, I don't know how, but it gets worse. There was a few different warning signs that like, and this probably isn't where I want to work at. First incident being an incident with a rat. I worked a morning shift. I was on myself because Petland was dead the other day. People were in school and work and shit. A mother and a child comes in. I'm up front and I'm doing the drawers. You know, I had just opened. The little kid is like reaching in the petter to pick up a bunny. She picks up the bunny and puts it in her arm. She starts to back out of the petter with it. And I had asked her like, hey, honey, like just please make sure you're keeping the bunnies over the petter so we don't drop them or have an accident or anything like that. Like I'm completely used to this kind of shit. Parents bring their kids in and let them run rampant and don't watch them and thinks it's okay. Us employees are not your personal babysitters, so I wanted her to like hold it back over the petter so he didn't fall. And next thing you know, she drops him. Oh my fucking God. I pick him up and I immediately walk him into the small animal room to see if he's okay. And I notice 
that his toe is bent backwards. So it's originally like this, it was all the way bent. I literally panicked. Oh my God, this bunny's toe is broken. I was the only person there. What the hell do I do? So I automatically called Nikki. What do I do? This this little girl just came in. She accidentally dropped a bunny. The bunny's toe is broken. She's like, don't worry about it. I'm coming here later on today. I'll take him to the vet. He'll be fine. I set up a little cage for him to stay in so he didn't have to be out with the public where anyone else could hurt him. And I left him in there until three. So came back that Monday, I opened again, and the bunny was still on the small animal room. And I'm like, what is going on? So I talked to the boy Red, and I was like, why is this bunny still here like four days later? He was like, she took him to the vet, and the vet pretty much said that she could fix the toe, but it would cost a lot of money to fix it. And honestly, the bunny can live with a broken toe. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Are you kidding me? You're gonna let this bunny live with a broken toe? That blew me so much. Cause I was like, this bunny literally has suffered for the rest of his life. While this store is making billions of dollars a year and you really can't pay to get the bunny's toe fixed. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's how we doing it. Fast forward a little bit. It was a busy Sunday and a little girl had came in and she dropped the hamster and ran over it and killed it and ran away because you know kids are afraid of getting in trouble she stepped on it and then ran one of the other employees had picked it up and brought it into the small animal room and they had called me in there and i was like oh my god what in the fuck happened i was like heartbroken that is not right something should be done about this we have to like tell her mom or something you can't just let kids abuse animals and then just run away but she was like i don't even bring no job i, I know what to do so i just followed what she said we should do and i followed her into the back freezer well, I have never opened up the back freezer at this point. It never came into my mind to open up the back freezer. I don't eat there. You know, I'm just there to work. I don't spend extra time there. I'm supposed to. I'm literally on the floor. And when I'm out on the floor, I'm at home. So she opens it up. And when I tell you that my mouth like hit the floor, I mean like my mouth hit the floor. When I tell you there was seven dead animals in the freezer, seven, eight, nine, maybe more dead hamsters, bunnies, fish what in the fuck is this and she's like oh yeah this is where we throw the dead animals at once they die because then we can get our money back if we show proof that they're dead so y'all mean to tell me that y'all save y'all's dead animals and put them in a freezer so that y'all can get your money back so fucking wrong she proceeds to you know wrap it up put it in the freezer call it a day and then the last incident with small animals are probably the one that's most heartbreaking to me and like i'm getting watery eye just thinking about it because i like i witnessed it and i watched it it was a slow night a pretty slow night a girl had came in and she had bought a chameleon from us and he wasn't doing well he was he was obviously sick like he was malnourished he needed food she said he was like sh breathing pretty shallow not too bad but just something that she didn't really know how to fix and she didn't know what to do and she had literally just bought him from us so she said she didn't want to go to the vet and pay for him like obviously he's sick she didn't want her money back she just wanted us to fix him and then just to get back to her and then the fish guy took him put him up i'm engaged with all the animals i did work with puppies exclusively but i'm an animal lover so i spend a lot of time with all of the animals and i make it like my personal prerogative to make sure that all of them are okay and they're doing okay so i had walked over there to take a look at him and i noticed that he's on the floor of the like the the habitat that he's in he's literally on the floor on his side so i instantly go get the reptile person and i'm like hey like this chameleon is laying on the floor i don't even know if he's alive he's not moving the guy's like oh shit like i'm coming i'm coming so he comes and we put him into a little um like a, an, an aquarium like a little like a little 10 gallon like something small just for the meantime we put him in there we taking it take him in to the um small animal room i asked him like we should we should take him to the vet he needs to go to the vet right now i will run and take him he's gonna die like i i kid you not this poor animal was literally breathing so shallow one breath every 20 seconds and then it went to one breath every 30 seconds i i kept on asking him and he was like no we're not taking him to the vet we're not taking him to the vet it's not worth it he's already gonna die i don't care i don't care if even if we took him to the vet if he's gonna die you better damn well be giving this animal the best chance it has to live because that's not right. You don't get to say he's just gonna die anyways and just not try at all. You better try for that animal. That is a living species. If he's hanging on to life, then you better you better try. You better do something. He just kept on saying, no, when I tell you that I sat there and watched that poor chameleon struggle for hours, I was crying. I didn't even care if I got fired, if the manager walked in and fired me. I sat with that chameleon while he took his last breath for hours and hours and hours. I sat in there my whole shift and watched him struggle to breathe that affected me more than anything else it's something to like 
be told like oh the animal died than to just sit there and know that you can help him and just be able to do nothing i couldn't afford to take him to the vet on my own money and the store said they're not paying for it so what am i gonna do i felt like the actual biggest piece of shit on this earth it, it was horrid it was absolutely horrendous absolutely horrendous that was probably my most heartbreaking incident what i think everyone is here for is for the last set of warning signs for me and that was obviously the puppies with the puppies the first warning sign for me is when they brought the puppies in during the first week so like oh my god they're so cute oh my god they're puppies because they were small puppies you know we get them at eight weeks old they're adorable and that's of course all you're thinking about at first but these puppies were really sick they uh had diarrhea all the time so much so that customers would be like why the hell does this dog have diarrhea like obviously because when you pull them out to play they're gonna poop like the dogs they, they're, they're puppies at that they go poop wherever they want to so we spent a lot of time cleaning up poop and that was probably one of the main questions that, aside from is this inhumane is why do they have diarrhea and what the vet tech will tell you which i cannot vouch for this might be true it might not be true i don't know because i'm not a pet tech supposedly the reason they had diarrhea was from the dewormer that we gave the puppies don't know if that's true don't know if it's not true they had diarrhea bad like peeing out of the butt bad sometimes they would throw up too you'd ask the vet text like oh it's from the dewormer upsets the stomach not gonna get into that because i don't know too much information about that particular thing even aside from the diarrhea the puppies still were very sick a lot of the puppies came in with upper respiratory diseases, chest problems, runny noses. They were sick and I mean, it's like, what do you expect when you rip a puppy away from its family and you put it in a cage with other puppies that is literally this big, puppies are gonna get sick. That's why we did, you know, clean as best as we can. We gave them baths and all that, but it just wasn't enough. If this is a baby. If you expose them to all of these bacteria, they're gonna be sick. And so it's not so much me blaming Petland kind of thing, just a fact of the matter that they were sick. This is when I was introduced to what is called the ISO room. ISO as in isolation. The ISO room is where Petland keeps sick puppies. It's in the back of the store with a big plaque on it that says employees only. This is where you take sick puppies to isolate them for the rest of the puppies in hopes that there is not a breakout of an illness. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It was it was so heartbreaking. There were sick dogs back there, sometimes seven, eight at a time. Even walked back there, walked past the door. It just it reeked like just rotten. There was this one particular time that I remember from the ISO room. It was a husky and he had got sick with like a really bad upper respiratory disease and giardia and we had him in the ISO room and it was me and Red. We went back there and the puppy was full of blood. His whole arm was full of blood. And I, I automatically freak out. We didn't just put them back there and just let them die. We did treat them. He had an IV in his arm and he must have bit it open. She pretty much has us FaceTime the nurse and put the needle back in. And that was really traumatizing for me. Blood was everywhere and this puppy was hanging on to life like he was he was lifeless we did everything we could to save his you know life but when i came in the next day he wasn't there no more another thing that was a little triggering for me is like i said that puppy did have IV in it is that the vet techs gave the puppy shots with no license i'm not a vet nor am i a vet teacher so i'm not sure if you have to have a license to give dog shots but I know that none of those vet techs had any kind of license or degree or certificate or anything that said that they were able to give those dogs shots. I don't know if that's a thing, if they even have to have that. I don't know, don't at me, because I really don't know, but that is just food for thought, is that they were actively giving these animals vaccinations and shots with no accreditation. The other thing that was a little triggering, which is like not too triggering, like obviously it's a business, but a little bit is when I did start getting like really into selling there and that kind of stuff, I noticed while I was printing off the puppy paperwork one time that this particular puppy that I was selling for five grand was only $600. That is a lot of money and I get that they have to make profit of it, but $600 we paid for it and five grand is what it was sold for. You could really just tell where Petland's morals really lied at. They definitely were in it for the money. My final straw, I bought my puppy from them. I made sure that he was healthy, I made sure that he was fed right, and I had talked to them, made sure that he wasn't sick or anything like that, and they all assured me he was good to go. I brought him home and he was sick. If I have pictures, I'll insert them.
his nose crusted together. He was wheezing really bad. He couldn't breathe. He choked for about three days. I took him to Petland and I pretty much, you know, told them like, hey, I work here and you sold me this sick dog. And they pretty much were like, well, you bought him for a discount. So there's nothing we can do about that. That's when it was like done for me. I was like, that. that's it. Petland sold that dog to me sick and they refused to pay for anything to help him get better. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I know it's like kind of long, but I did just want to get this out here because I did get a lot of questions about it. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that like button, and leave me a comment on how you feel about Petland and pet stores in general. I love to hear some feedback on it. If you are an old subscriber, thank you for tuning in for another one of my videos. I love you guys so much. Y'all have a blessed night.